Hi everyone, this is a uh, quick demonstration of some of the capabilities of my new Splash ROV controller. Um, this is the basic unit, <clears throat> this has got everything in it. Um, it works in conjunction with a wireless or wired game controller. This is a generic uh, brand, but it's also designed to work with the uh, Logitech F710 wireless controller or the Logitech 310 wired controller. Um, the controller has got uh, 12 volt input power and six uh, motor outputs. So I'm just going to hook this up. Uh, this is the status display uh, and this is a 12 volt battery. So the first thing you notice there is it flashed up uh, an indication of the flight mode that the controller is in. I'm going to do that again. A couple of seconds to boot up and then F0. So right now this is in flight mode 0. Now there's two settings. Uh, there's flight mode and motor configuration. Flight mode sets how you like to run your controller, um, be that independent motor control or vectored thrust. Uh, so there's several options there. And the other option is the motor configuration, and that's how the motors are configured on the ROV. So it depends on how many horizontal, vertical, lateral thrusters you have, you can select different configurations, and I'll, I'll get to that in a second. What is showing right here is in its default mode of status display, it's showing me input voltage. Uh, there are 16 LEDs across here, and this area is divided into four 1 volt sections. There's a um, sticker that will be on here, but it's, uh, it's currently still being printed. But what's happening is this is the little display over time. You'll see it a little bit every now and then, and each one of these LEDs represents a quarter of a volt. So starting at 10 volts, 11, 12, 13. So this tells me that this currently this battery is in the 12 to 12.25 volt range. As you run your controller, you'll see this vary. Uh, I can change what's being displayed here by using the controller. So the first thing you need to know is how to set up the controller. So this has got a power switch on the back, I switch it on, and because this one has communicated with this uh, uh, controller recently, it's actually already connected. And you can tell that by the fact there's a solid light here. Uh, if this wasn't connected, uh, it would be flashing. So for example, if I turn, unplug this, it goes into flashing mode. So, so I'm going to turn that off. So if I turn this on, it's flashing. When I plug this in, it connects. Uh, with multiple controllers, this particular unit does not specifically remember which one it's meant to be connected to once it's been powered off. Once they're powered on and connected, they'll stay locked. Uh, if there's multiple controllers that all come up at the same time, you can tell whether it's connected to this unit or not by hitting the select and it will show you the current mode that the display is in. If that doesn't change, all you need to do is power this down and up again, and it will then attempt to connect to it again. Uh, it's a fairly straightforward process once you get the hang of it. So to illustrate that, so right now we're in the voltage display mode, and I can tell that by if I hit the select button, it says uh, display voltage. If I hit the start, I can sequence through other displays, display the gamepad, display the motor outputs and then it circulates around again. So when it's in display gamepad mode, I can move the controls and it will show me what is happening on the gamepad. For example, each one of those LEDs corresponds to a button on the pad. So this is a good way for diagnosing if your controls are actually working the way you want. Um, this the control defaults to be in uh, uh, PlayStation mode. Uh, if I hit the home button, it switches it to two LEDs and now I get nice proportional control on my joysticks and I have all the access to all the other features. So if, if I leave it like this, it'll continue to display what the controls are doing. The other mode was the, the motor mode, in which case when I move the sticks now, it's showing me what the output power is being sent to the motors. And there's six, six motors, and so it uses the first two, leaves a gap, the next two leaves a gap, and the next two, and it gives me the six statuses. So here's my joysticks, and in the mode I'm in now, uh, it's sending the same power when I go forward and backwards to the first and second thruster. If I rotate, it sends opposite power. So you can see what's being sent to your controls. All right, so, so that's that mode. And that's pretty useful to, to make sure the things are going on right with your thrusters so you know what you're getting. I'm going to switch this back to voltage mode. So that's the basic display modes. And right now I'm back into voltage display. In order to change the flight modes, and this, you're only going to need to do this um, based on your pilot or your specific ROV, 
If I hold the select button down, I go into my display mode. My left and right, sorry, my left bumper and joystick allow me to change something else. So if I hit the top bumper, it now says F0, which means I'm in flight mode zero. I can switch to a different flight mode. Now, flight modes and motor configurations are stored in flash memory on the unit. So once you've set it up, it remembers that. The next time it powers up, it comes up the same way. So you don't have to remember to do this. Likewise, if I hit the bottom button, now it shows me my motor configuration of my ROV. And right now it's in motor configuration one. And there's a lookup so that you can see which one's which. This is a um, basic uh, non-vectored thrust. So two axials, uh, two laterals, and two verticals is motor mode one. All right, so I'm gonna let go. So in order to test this, of course, it'd be nice to have an ROV to plug it into. I don't have one here, but what I have is a, uh, a, test, a test load. Each one of these guys here is a two ohm resistor. Uh, so when get, uh, put across 12 volts, it will uh, sink uh, five amps of current. Actually, they're 2.2 .2 ohm resistors, so that's why they get five amps of current. All right, so I'm gonna plug these in. So these are fairly substantial load in terms of a brushed DC motor. All right, so the interesting thing here is now that I have a full load here, you're gonna see what happens to the voltage supply when I start loading them up. Um, so my controller's configured, it's still hooked up. Uh, so if I give some forward thrust here, uh, one thing you may be able to notice the sound uh, when, when you're in, in between power, you'll hear the ringing uh, and that's from the, the uh, uh, digital uh, motor controller chip. But you can see on my supply voltage, when I give it a current, if I give it some more current, this is a fairly low capacity battery. It's just uh, a nickel metal hydride battery. Uh, if you had a real power supply, the voltage wouldn't drop anywhere near that much. Um, something that's always interesting is to see what heat's generated. If I um, if I switch to show me my motor outputs, we can see what I'm getting. So when I push forward on the stick, I'm getting two motors at five amps. So that's ten amps. If I uh, let's see, if I go full vertical, that's still only give me one motor. I think I need to go to a different motor mode here. So. This is. So this is a um, four horizontal thrusted vectored thrust configuration. So when I go forward, I get full power on all four motors. That is gonna give me 20 amps of current. And I can feel this starting to warm up. This is a reasonably substantial heat sink here. Uh, so if I give it full current, I'm counting roughly. I have a temperature gauge here. I'm just gonna start getting a reading on these here just to indicate. So they're up to 102 now. Um, but this is just the load, so this is simulating, yeah, it's getting quite warm, uh, simulating the thrust. So one of the cool things in the software on this thing is the vertical thrust. I'm just going to let that go for a second. So my vertical thrust is configured uh, on the right hand trigger and bumper button. And you can see that when I hit the top button, I get full uh, up thrust. And when I hit the bottom button, I get full down thrust. Uh, but usually you won't really want that for changing depth. Uh, in order to generate uh, your neutral buoyancy, uh, well, it, it, sorry, that's if you don't have perfect neutral buoyancy and you have a little, you picked up something, you're a little bit light, you really want to trim the thrusters. So what we have in here is we have an up and down trim setting. So I can, in fact, trim up. So for example, if I needed 30% thrust to be trimmed, it'll stay there and I can switch between full and full up and down. But when I let go, it goes back to the standard trim. So that's a cool little feature that we just did in the software here. Uh, you can reset that trim just by hitting the little X there. So that's one of the flight modes where you have full, so it's assuming you have six thrusters on your ROV. Getting warm here. So that's of course translating sideways. That's rotating, you see the difference between those. So uh, you can actually really see a lot of what's going on. You can see the voltage. Uh, currently you can't see the current. Uh, that could be a future addition to the design. Now if I were to hold full full forward on uh, and so I'd get four thrusters and then full vertical six thrusters that would take me over the 20 amp limit and within about 10 or 12 seconds um, the fuse will blow. Uh, 
which you know protects the circuitry, protects the logic. Uh, you could go with a higher fuse. You just need to pay attention to not keeping that high current for too long, uh, just because of heat generated. But there you go. That's uh, the basic operation of the splash controller. Okay, so uh, of course, what as an engineer, as a designer, what really interests me about this box is what it looks like inside. So this is a um, hand cut prototype of the box, but the production units will be machined and cut correctly. So the circuit board is actually in the lid of the box. First thing you'll notice is that it's a um, two-part board assembly. On the top or underneath, depending on how you look at it, is an Arduino Mega uh, ADK, and that's the Android Development Kit version. And what's special about this board is that it has a standard USB-A connector that I can plug a wireless um, uh, wireless adapter for the game controller. The circuit board uh, underneath is the splash controller that I've designed and it's uh, got several features above and beyond the actual circuitry itself. Um, one of the features that I use on this board is that it's actually a double thickness copper on it, uh, two ounce versus one ounce. This gives me um, better conductivity of course, but it also gives me good thermal dissipation from the uh, chips. Alright, so here's the main controller board. Uh, it's pretty compact, um, assuming you ignore the Arduino. And the Arduino is just plugged in. This is a standard board. Uh, uh, the code, it can be reprogrammed. It has a standard programming interface on it. And it actually gets its power from the top board. Uh, so the top board is uh, has a 12 volt input here it goes through a uh, high current FET which is used to do the um, reverse polarity protection so if you plug power into this the wrong way around uh, it just doesn't do anything it doesn't power the rest of the board so it protects everything else from you know fatal disasters which I'm all sure we've seen at one point or other <clears throat> underneath uh, this small heatsink here are six motor controller chips each one is capable of supplying 15 amps uh, although the design that I've really got here is, uh, I'm assuming, a 5 amp continuous current on these. Uh, that's a you know, bilge pump motor under fairly heavy load. Uh, if you exceed the capacity, uh, they'll start getting fairly warm and they'll shut down. There's a lot of protection on these chips. There's uh, under and over voltage protection, there's short circuit protection, there's thermal protection. So they're pretty good. Uh, they have a very low uh, <clears throat> internal resistance. Um, in the order of 50 milliohms, I believe. Uh, and uh, I'm sorry, 70 milliohms. These aren't the 50s, these are 70 milliohms. Uh, so <clears throat> uh, heat dissipation is minimal, as you saw from the previous uh, demonstration. Uh, I have a circuit board uh, that has uh, this heat sink removed and I'll, I'll just show that at some point. This is designed to be fairly low profile so that it can fit inside this control box. If this board was ever redesigned, uh, to be independent of the Arduino, then this could use a bigger heatsink. Uh, also under this heatsink are uh, a large quantity of small chip capacitors used as uh, um, supplying spike currents uh, when needed, and then we have the bulk capacitors on the outside. So this whole section here is just the power supply, uh, the motor controller, sorry. Uh, the module on the end here is a, a little piece from Adafruit, and it provides the 16 by 8 LED grid that I use for diagnostics and status information. Not too much else on the board. Um, the um, Anderson power pole connectors are soldered in through the board here. Uh, these use plated through slots so there's fairly high current capacity. Uh, this is only a two layer board but the entire bottom section of the board is the um, uh, 12 volt power and the majority of the top side of the board is the ground. Uh, there's only some small traces on the bottom that break up this. So there's a lot of heat dissipation and current capability uh, on this board. Uh, only some of the pins for the Arduino are populated. Um, most of these pins aren't required here, uh, so we, we don't even bother putting them in. Uh, the other thing to notice here is there is an um, inline fuse uh, 
uh, from the main power. Right now I've got a 20 amp fuse in here, but this could be 25 just to give a little bit of extra overhead. Uh, if uh, this runs for any length of time <coughs> over 20 amps, you know, a minute, <coughs> then this fuse will heat up and blow. If you get to about 25 amps, it blows fairly quickly. And uh, there you have it.